Marty Tankliff. When Tankliff was 17 years old in 1990, he was accused of killing his parents in their Long Island home. He was found guilty and given a 50-year prison sentence despite maintaining his innocence. The court's response to Tankliff's case was deeply troubling. There wasn't enough physical evidence, but the jury still declared him guilty. The judge gave him an extremely long sentence that would have kept him in prison for most of his life. Luckily, in 2007, Tankliff was pardoned and released from prison. New evidence emerged that proved he had nothing to do with his parents' murder. Another person was identified as a suspect suspect, arrested, and eventually convicted. Luis Vargas Luis Vargas, who lived in Los Angeles, California, was accused of three sexual assaults. The crimes had similarities, leading the police to believe they were all done by the same person. Vargas was found guilty of all charges and spent 16 years in prison. However, the California Innocence Project tested the DNA evidence and clothing from one of the victims and discovered they did not match Vargas. This evidence proved that he was innocent and did not commit the crimes he was convicted of. When Vargas was proven innocent, he didn't say anything. His only desire which he expressed to his mother was to have a large hamburger and enjoy it together. It was reported that after being cleared of the charges, Vargas received $886,000 as compensation from the state. Calvin Michael Smith In 1997, when he was only 20 years old, he was found guilty of a violent attack and robbery in North Carolina. However, Smith always claimed that he was innocent. The judge imposed a sentence of nearly 30 years in prison, even though there was very little physical evidence to support his guilt. Fortunately, after spending over 20 years behind bars, new evidence came to light in 2019 that proved Smith's innocence. He was declared not guilty and released from prison. Eddie Lowry In 1981, he was found guilty of rape in Kansas and received an 11-year sentence. The judge imposed an unusually lengthy sentence, even considering Lowry's young age and the questionable evidence against him. As a teenager, he lacked the knowledge and means to effectively defend himself against the accusations. Throughout nearly 10 years in prison, he maintained his innocence. Fortunately, in 2022, Lowry was granted a pardon and released from prison. New DNA evidence came to light, conclusively proving that he had no involvement in the crime he was convicted of. The Central Park Five The Central Park Five, also known as the Exonerated Five, were young black and Latino men wrongly accused and convicted of raping a white woman in New York City's Central Park in 1989. The victim was severely injured and left unconscious, a attracting significant media attention. The police arrested and charged five teenage boys, Antron McRae, Kevin Richardson, Youssef Salam, Raymond Santana, and Corey Wise, with the crime. The boys were subjected to lengthy interrogations without the presence of their parents or lawyers, and the police used coercive methods to force confessions from them. All five boys were found guilty and sentenced to prison, with Corey Wise receiving the longest sentence of 13 years in an adult facility. However, in 2002, a convicted rapist named Matthias Reyes confessed to the crime. The DNA evidence proved that Reyes was solely responsible for the assault and none of the Central Park Five were involved. In 2002, the five men were declared innocent and overturned their convictions. Anthony Wright In 1991, Wright was found guilty of a violent rape and murder in Philadelphia, despite a lack of physical evidence connecting him to the crime. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. He would spend the rest of his life incarcerated. Fortunately, in 2016, Wright was pardoned and released. This pardon was granted based on new DNA evidence proving his innocence in the rape and murder case. The DNA evidence pointed to another individual as the perpetrator, who was subsequently arrested and convicted. Daniel Villegas Daniel Villegas endured 18 years of wrongful imprisonment for a double homicide he did not commit in El Paso, Texas. He was arrested at 16, and it was reported that an El Paso detective coerced him by threatening beatings and the death penalty if he didn't confess. Pressured, Villegas signed a confession prepared by the detectives. Later, he tried to retract his confession, but it was too late. Based solely on this false confession, he was charged with two counts of capital murder. In his initial trial, the jury couldn't reach a verdict. However, Villegas was found guilty in the retrial and received a life sentence. After spending 18 years behind bars, the verdict was eventually overturned. Villegas was released on bail, got married, and started a family. During his third trial, Villegas anxiously awaited the jury's decision, determining whether he could go home with his family or be sent back to prison for a life sentence. Fortunately, the jury found him not guilty, leading to his freedom. Villegas is now a free man and has reportedly filed a lawsuit against the city of El Paso. Form B, we, the jury, find the defendant Daniel Villegas not guilty of... That concludes this video. Thank you for watching.